Hi, Mike Caswell here. I'm going to show you today how to change a Ryobi curved shaft weed trimmer into an outboard engine for a kayak or a canoe. Uh, first of all, we're going to start off by removing a few of the components from the actual weed trimmer. We're going to remove the trimmer head and the guard and everything to do with the handle and the lever for the throttle control. So let's move to my workshop and get started on this conversion. This is the Ryobi lawn trimmer and I have removed some components, uh, mainly the switch, the trigger. Uh, we're going to discard all the components of that because it's far too complicated for the job that we need to do. Uh, and I've taken the cover off the, off the carburetor and you can see here, and this is the part that we are going to be interested in. This is the throttle movement here, and you can see a little hole there, which we are going to put uh, a new part in there. Uh, so we're ready to go. Um, throw all this away. We don't need it. We're going to use a trigger instead. Uh, here we have the trigger. Uh, very simple arrangement, but much more efficient than that for this job. Okay, here you can see the shaft has been pulled out of the engine and the rubber handle pulled off uh, and also the throttle cable is now free. So we'll start to take that apart and uh, take it out of the actual carburetor arrangement here. We're going to put a longer throttle cable in uh, so we need to take this one out and the uh, best way to do that is to just unhook it with a pair of needle nose pliers. To remove the choke housing, uh, which also has the filter in it, uh, you need to take the two screws out uh, and uh, it will all come apart quite easily. There are two small lugs on the plastic insert into the housing that need to be depressed so that you can pull it out. The cable on the right is the new cable which is much longer than the one we've just taken out. And we're going to put two nuts on there. Uh, on the threaded area and that's going to be inserted back into where we took this plastic one. Uh, we're going to throw the plastic uh, cable away because it's too short um, and then we're going to snip the nipple off the longer cable and uh, replace it with the little z-bend there made of uh, 1 16th diameter copper wire, solid copper wire or brass rod. Cutting this cable with tin snips or scissors or something like that can often fray the ends of it so I suggest that you decide where you're going to cut it and then pour some super glue over it and let it dry. If it takes a while to dry you can always rub a little bit of baking soda onto the glue and it will set it up instantly. Once it's, once it's set up then you can snip it and the part will be uh, fray free. I've already taken the brass rod and turned it into a z-bend at the end and then snipped it off about a quarter of an inch long. Uh, that's going to be placed inside the little bit of brass tube and then either crimped on or you could solder it in place. Once you've installed the outer cable housing into the throttle chamber you should pull the inner cable all the way through so that it, it, uh, you can measure exactly where it needs to be against the hole where the z-bend goes. Before you cut the inner cable to length, remember to dab some super glue on the cut area to stop it fraying and let it set up. Otherwise you'll have difficulty in inserting the cable into the brass tube. Use a little more super glue when you install the brass tube. Let it set, then install the Z-bend into the carburetor and check that the throttle lever action moves the carburetor valve through its full motion. If it needs adjustment, then heat the brass tube with a small blowtorch to release the superglue adhesion. Then reinstall using superglue again. Once you have the adjustment correct, then crimp the brass tube onto the inner cable in several places. As an alternative to crimping, you could tin the cable and solder the Z-bend and brass tube together, but you should be experienced at soldering to achieve this. Now, 
we're going to do a practice run here on how to bend a pipe. I'm going to use this plastic uh, to give you some idea of how it's done. So we have our blowtorch and we're going to do it close to the sky. I'm going to scroll this a little bit, burn it a bit, but it's not a big deal. Doesn't take much. Now we should be able to bend it really easily. No pressure at all. And we'll hold it there for a second or two and let it cool down. And hopefully we have a 45 degree bend roughly. So here's our finished bends. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, of course you could bend this to make these angles compound. And I'll show you how to do that. Actually it's better with using the elbows that are supplied with the pipe. So let's have a look at that now. I've laid the plastic pipe alongside the unit here with one handle already installed just so that you can see that you can have some sort of comparison of what you're trying to achieve here. Now we're going to tailor make this handle to suit you personally. So what you need first of all is a length of this pipe here, no more than about four inches long because it's got to hold the two brackets that hold it onto the shaft. So it only needs to be this short. Then you have an elbow that's going to turn it up here. And I have probably just over a foot of pipe here, which we're going to trim if we need to. And then there's a length of it shoot, shooting over here. So here's our pipe all put together. Uh, not glued because we need to disassemble this several times probably to get this right. Bear in mind that you can make these angles here compounded so we can bring this up here like this if we need to. Uh, and similarly this can come up here. Uh, there's just lots of variations on where this could actually be. And this is why this pipe is so good to uh, to get your handle in the perfect position for you. You probably need to set this up on the boat, uh, sat in the, in the seat, and then you can see where the handle actually needs to go. I've moved the original handle to go over the top of the engine this time, and I've put the plastic one parallel to it so that you can see. Whoops. <laughs> You can see that it's uh, very similar. There you go. Leave the last bit of tube longer than you need it so, so that uh, you can trim that later on as well. Now this uh, aluminum tubing here is only supplied in a three foot length from shipping purposes but uh, if you need a longer piece of tubing you can always buy some from Home Depot or Lowe's look for three quarter inch aluminum tube. So now we have a rough idea of the shape that we need. We're going to mark the bends on here just so that we have a good idea of where they should be. Let's say that's roughly about there. So we've got two marks now, one here and where's the other one? Here. A bit better. Okay. So now let's get and bend it. We set up in the vise. So we're going to keep this area here. We're going to pull. We're going to pull the uh, aluminum tube towards us. And let's get this going. Here we're going to heat it all the way around because we want the entire circumference. More flexible because of the heat. Get just the tip of it, of the, the tip of the 
plane is the most um, where the greatest heat is. So if you do it like this, that's no good. If you do it like this, it's better. You get hotter quicker. So here's our first bend completed and now we just start on our second one. So this time we're pushing away. Here's the finished uh, article. You can see that I have a slight compound angle there because this is raised up a little here. But that can be rectified by just uh, heating it again and just, just bending it slightly. Or you may actually find that that's okay and you want to put a compound angle in it like that. So there's your finished job. Using the diagram here, assemble the gimbal by placing the 5 16 inch hex bolt into the lower U-shaped part first. Then push the socket head cap screw through the U part, securing the upper unit. The upper socket head cap screw and nut are for tightening the unit to the main drive shaft. Place a washer on the hex bolt and slide on to the plastic bushing. A half inch diameter hole needs to be drilled about one inch from the end of the square transom bar to accommodate the plastic bushing. Install the gimbal bolt and bushing into the transom bar. Remove the drive shaft from the Ryobi engine and slide the gimbal unit onto it, but don't tighten it yet. The transom bar position is going to vary depending on the boat. You will probably need a helping hand to find the best position for you. So assemble the complete outboard onto the transom bar, then sit in the boat with the engine to your left preferably. The reason for this is that on most weed trimmers the exhaust blows out towards the left slightly. Get someone to hold the unit with the transom bar resting on the boat deck behind you. You need to have the engine overhang at least 6 inches out from the hull to enable you to make a decent turn to both port and starboard. Here you can see the engine has a limited turn capability to the right, but here it is further out from the hull and so will make a sharper turn. Check the handle and throttle lever are comfortable too. You can swing the steering handle left, center or right of the engine, so many positions can be achieved. Drill two 5 16 inch holes through the transom bar about one foot apart and then use these holes as a template to drill through the hull. This configuration allows you to remove the transom bar yet still have the holding bolts in place for future use. Here are some diagrams of how to bolt the transom arm to the hull.